Right, evening folks, how are we all doing? Um, right, this was, uh, this is my second, my second attempt at shooting this video. Um, I'm going to be reviewing some of the Cornell and Deal OJ, OJ, oh Jesus Christ, Old Joe Krantz that uh, John Daffrilli sent to me. Um, I did smoke this yesterday and as many of you probably know that when I tend to do a YouTube video I often kind of dribble and babble and I tend not to shut the fuck up basically. Um, yesterday was no different. Uh, I smoked a very very small bowl of it and um, for some reason I 35 minutes I spent on that review. So um, I'm going to redo it again today. I'm doing a little bit shorter. Now yesterday my first impressions of this tobacco um, I always smoke things blind the first time round um, I was under the impression it could have had a little bit of cigar leaf in there kind of the, the pepper and the spice that I was getting from this tobacco I associate with cigar leaf from the pouch it's got a very sour aroma to it kind of sour this little subtle sweetness there you've got that very overpowering kind of I say dry but it's kind of a, the, that cocoa-y kind of burly aroma so I put this down yesterday to thinking Virginia Burley, a bit of Orientals in there maybe. But once I started smoking it, I thought, hmm, could be a bit of a bit of cigar leaf. I say it's got a bit of a like a growing spice. But as I say, I looked at it at the end, it's a Virginia Burley Perique blend. Looking at it, the Perique is very, very light. The Perique I'm used to in the UK is black, black as hell. And got a very, very spicy, pungent smell. Even mixed with V and V and B, um, you kind of don't get this kind of aroma but it is absolutely gorgeous stuff so this is going to be my basically my second smoke of this so hopefully I'll kind of a little bit more a little bit more in depth uh, I'm going to be smoking this in my trusty my trusty Parker collection my Dunhill second Canadian that I sanded down so it's one of my one of my favorite pipes this is I love this pipe I adore this pipe so I'm just quickly going to load up and I'll give you my charring lights like I say, I have smoked this before, so this is kind of my second my second tasting of this tobacco. Um, a bigger pipe, I want to get more flavour from it, basically. Um, but I absolutely adored this stuff yesterday. Excuse me. Um, so like I say, I'm just going to load up, and I shall be back in a minute. Only a two-minute introduction. Right. One thing that I did discover um, with this tobacco yesterday is it expands and swells quite a bit once you light it. So today I've learnt my lesson, um, kind of loosely packed it. I had a problem yesterday where I had to dig out and start again. Um, I love it when there's a, a new tobacco you've never smoked before. Uh, you never quite know how to uh, how to go about filling and how to go about packing and lighting. Now onto the lighting subject, we come down to the usual conundrum that I often suffer with. Got a lighter, it's got no flint. Got a lighter, it's got no fuel. So, uh, do the good old. Uh... Do you know what? You would not believe that I run a tobacconist. You would not believe that I own over 60 Zippos, hundreds and hundreds of other lighters. Yeah, on this desk, I can't find anything. I don't even have a pipe tool to hand today. So just excuse me one moment. <clears throat> this thing should always be at hand. This is an empty whiskey tube and um, it is absolutely full of uh, lighters. I accumulate so many bloody lighters, it is unbelievable. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get this bad boy going. Sometimes I wish all pipes came with the uh, the little metal spike in them. I'm sick of powdery bits of tobacco stuck on my tongue all the time. Right. Don't. What I found 
yesterday, and I seem to be fine again today with these first lights, is tobacco has a very sour taste. Um, a little bit like sour cream, sour milk. Uh, it's very, very smooth, very, very creamy to start off with. Um, some lovely sweetness from the Virginias. Got that lovely dry taste from the Burley. And it's just a beautiful tobacco. The spice kind of starts to grow. Once you start smoking it, it starts at the back of the palate and starts driving its way forward. It's got a lovely long spicy finish to it. Um, there is some very, very... The Virginias produce a tangy, almost fruity flavour. I'm assuming it's the Virginia and the Periques blending together. I wouldn't really say it was quite figgy, um, as I read a few people uh, mentioned on tobacco reviews. got a lovely tobacco taste it's quite harsh if you let any of it go down the back of your throat again which I discovered yesterday but I say the, it's all in the finish to me the inhale is say smooth and creamy it's got some lovely sweetness to it and the finish is dry it's got like cocoa burly taste and the spice just starts to grow and grow and it packs quite a bit of strength um, Burley blends are not very popular here in the UK. Um, obviously, um, the term English um, it comes from your English tobaccos. You do get, you do find Virginia Burley like aromatic tobaccos that tend not to be too nice, quite cheap, like your Brookfield blends and some of the other more cheaper budget tobaccos are just V, v and B mixtures, as I refer to them as. Um, but it's definitely something else. Um, you get burly throat quite quickly. Um, I was trying to explain this to somebody in Cuba. Not the easiest thing to explain with the language barrier. But um, oh, I'll say it. Sweetness is beautiful. I just love the sour notes and the spice and the pepper. So I'm going to crack on with the first half of this bowl and um, start editing some of my videos from Cuba. I wasn't too impressed with what I did yesterday, so back to the bloody drawing board. But, um, but no, I love this tobacco. John, thanks a bloody million for sending me this, mate. It is chuffing awesome. So uh, like I say, I'll be back at the halfway point. Let you know how this tobacco progresses. It's not one dimensional at all. It's an increase and increase and increase in flavour until it hits its plateau like a good cigar. And then, wow. And flavours are amazing. So, like I say, I shall speak to you all in a moment. Right. I was going to come back at the halfway point, but I'm uh, picking videos and pictures and things. So, uh, pretty much at the end. So, I'm going to wrap this up. So, right, a review in two parts. Bizarre, isn't it? So, like I was saying, I find this tobacco, Old Joe Krantz, is a is very, very cigar-like in character. Starts off with some lovely kind of sweet and sour, sour notes to it. Very, very smooth and creamy. As you smoke it, the nicotine kind of increases and increases. Say so I start getting burly throat. You smoke it too fast, I start getting the hiccups. I consider myself quite a hardened smoker. Um... I enjoy smoking things like the cane. I love strong Nicaraguan cigars. Um, it's the same with my tobaccos, as and many of you have tried some of my blends. I um, don't like doing things that I like. Um, the flavours, you get some lovely earthy, kind of... Not quite woody tones, but you get some lovely dirty, kind of crisp flavours to it. Um, the sweetness is beautiful. Uh, the burley is very prominent, so I say it's got a very, very dry characteristics to it. The finish is long. It's a very, very long, peppery, spicy finish. Um, I still, Like I say, I still don't get the figgy notes a few people mentioned, but the, the subtly, slightly fruity tangs I completely agree with. But the taste and the smell and the, the characteristics and how it smokes, the texture, it all reminds me of a, a cigar, basically. 
with when you think about it, Burley and Burley and Havana Cigari for one and the same thing. The pro the curing and processing method of Burley um, is very similar. It just doesn't go through the fermentation process. So obviously the tobacco styles are the same, but it's been a long time with these two plants separated. So the kind of variations between them are, are, are vast. But the style of Burley, um, I say, is, is reminds me more of cigar tobacco than than anything else really. Um, it's a strong beast, like I said, it needs to be supped slowly, you go at it too hard and you, you start feeling it. Um, I love the pepper and the spice, it is a, an amazing characteristic to this tobacco. I said this a couple of minutes ago, but John, thank you so much for sending the mist to try. And um, to Thunderbird Pipes, thank you very much for asking me for to do a review of this tobacco, I'm officially in love with it. Um, definitely an after dinner tobacco. I wouldn't want to smoke this for my breakfast. Unless, of course, I want to get whacked on nicotine first thing in the morning, which I tend to do. Um, but no, this is a, a beautiful blend. Um, it's got a lot of... It's a very, very dynamic smoke. Like I say, it progresses, it hits its peak. Once you get about... A th well, until I get about a third, a quarter into the bowl sort of thing, it hits its peak with flavours. So the spice and pepper comes to life. Like the sourness subsides to say it's only really on the first charring lights and the first few draws <coughs> that you really get that sourness um what i will say about this is i get the impression that irish oak and uh germain's royal jersey perique blend this is the kind of thing they're going for but to me they taste like sick i hate those tobaccos and there isn't many tobaccos i i dislike as much as i don't like those too um but this this is basically what they're trying to achieve, but at perfection. Um, Strength-wise, it's quite a strong tobacco. Um, I'd put it up there with Purple Cow. Um, I say it's. It, I never would have assumed it was Virginia Burley and Perique without looking into it. I would have said there was some cigar leaf in this because it's got a very, very cigar-like characteristic to it. Um, I'm too busy waffling. Now. I've still got some left in here. Also, like a good cigar, um, the ash, beautiful white ash. Do you get a few grey tones in there, but the ash burns away to a beautiful, beautiful white ash. Um, it does smoke quite quickly, um, which I have found. Um, but no, it's a divine smoke. If you like your tobaccos, like, pushing towards full flavour and powerful, uh, you like strong Nicaraguan cigars with high ratios of Lajero, Ligero in there sort of thing. This is a great one for you to go for. If you're new to pipe smoking and you want to get into kind of um, good Perique mixtures, don't go for this first. Try Dunno Deluxe Navy Rolls. I imagine a Scudo is along those lines. A Gallus Louisiana Flake. Um, the Salani 633 is a lot more tangy, it's got a lot more Virginia like citrusy sharpness to it, whereas this, it's just the Virginia gives it a lovely, lovely sweetness. Um, it's hard for me to put my finger on exactly what the sweetness is, because the, the Burley and the Perique power act so much power, it's kind of the Virginia just carries it along and takes away from the dryness and spiciness and just gives the draw such a beautiful guy. It's not crisp, it's not citrusy, it's just a lovely, lovely, sweet tone to it. So I, I, I don't know if it's a beautiful red Virginia in there, I mean, it's quite mahogany. Uh, Colour-wise on this tobacco, which I forgot to mention at the start, sorry. Um, it's a very, very loose cut tobacco. Um, it's not shag at all, it's very loose, it's just shredded up bits of leaf sort of thing. Um, I think you might be able to see it reasonably well there. I can't really get this to refocus on things. Um, but, I say the dark tone's not in there much at all. There's not a lot of dark tobacco. So I don't know if it's a slightly different version. I say it probably is a completely different version of Preet to what we have in the UK. Uh, you guys over in the States, that side of the planet, produce some wonderful, wonderful tobaccos. And uh, as a result, you guys get the best picks of them all sort of thing. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it's Old Joe Krantz is an absolutely stunning tobacco. I'm officially in love with it. Um, it smokes like a cigar, hence my reference to Purple Cow. Um, I just love this smoke. Everything, the strength, the taste, the texture. It smokes cool. Um, does punish you if you smoke it too fast. So it's a very, very nice sit back, sup, relax. 
I imagine it would go very, very well paired with a drink. Um, I'm no good at pairing smokes with drinks. I tend to drink water or tea or pop with most of my smokes. But I guess something with a little bit of sweetness just to add a little bit more to it and really kind of take the edge off the pepper and the burn in the throat. But, but no, if you ever get a chance to try this, folks, I strongly recommend you do. If you say if you like big, strong, robust blends, um, everything I've tried by Cornell and Deal, I've fell in love with. You guys are lucky over there. Um, we, as you know, have sort of like three. We've got three what little boutique blend. Well, boutique blend is not the right term. Um, Gareth and Hogarth, I wouldn't really call a small affair. Samuel Gareth, neither of them. The Germain selection in the UK makes them quite small. I must admit, a lot of what they produce heads across the Atlantic. Um, you you guys are lucky with what you get from Germains. We get very, very little of, uh, of what you get. And what we do get, is, I don't hear very good things about it. I do like some of them. I do like the fact that it's old mottled tobacco. Anyway, I'm babbling on again. So no, like I say, Cornell and Deal, old Joe Krantz. I don't rate pipe tobaccos. This is a nine, a nine and a half, ten out of ten blend. I adore this stuff. Um, I said this in my video yesterday. To any of my friends out there that think you're going to be lucky enough to try a bit of this off me, there's not a chance on this earth I'm going to let any of you try this. I've only got an ounce of it, and uh, I am tempted to buy a lockable box to keep it in because this is stunning stuff. So thank you very, very much for watching. Big thanks to you again, John Daffley, for sending this to me. Um, it's freaking awesome stuff. So I'm going to crack on editing my videos, and um, I may be back later with a cigar review. I've still got quite a few I picked up in Cuba. I didn't review anything while I was over there. So until later, folks, I shall see you very, very soon. So take care. Goodbye.